Kia ora, nao mai. Hello and welcome to the latest video by Popola Urbanum. This week, I want to talk about my recent attempt to complete my first ever masculine impression. With the intention of supporting Andrew in his late 14th century Flemish urban militia impression, I aim to present a musician of the same period who is playing some kind of musical instrument in a martial context. I'll mostly be talking about my garments, but also a little about other sundry items, and most importantly, a little bit about context. I'm Ocean, and this is Popular Urbanum, a show where we talk about reenactment and the medieval middle class. So, if you've been following the channel, you might know that, living in Aotearoa, New Zealand, we have the good fortune to be looking forward to a public-facing reenactment event in the middle of this global pandemic. We have been preparing for this event for at least four months, but somehow mixed up the exact date of it. So the event is in fact on the 13th of February instead of the expected 6th of February. This gives us an extra week to spend on those last minute details. The impression that I'm creating is that of a Flemish musician in the employ of an urban merchant guild during the late 14th century. Due to the scarcity of local sources on the subject, I've had to draw from sources from all over Europe. But instead of talking about what we don't know, let's talk about what we do know. The urban burgic elites did outfit themselves with the trappings of the knightly class they would proceed to make themselves available to fight in times of need with the urban militia. We know from contemporary illustrations that the militias and the burgers would have musicians attending them during armed conflicts. However, what wasn't as clear to me was who these musicians were exactly and how they came to be in the situation of marching into battles with the urban militia. The article, Cavalry Trumpet and Kettle Drum Practice from the Time of the Celts and Romans to the Renaissance by Bruce P. Gleason relates two accounts of musicians or town waits representing craft guilds in London during the Lord Mayor's Show Parade from the early 13th to the early 15th century. This includes payments made to musicians to cover their expenses, drink and clothes. These were made by goldsmiths and other companies. Instruments played by those musicians would have included trumpets, shawms, bagpipes and clarions, and some of the musicians were also mounted on horseback. The term waits refers to English town musicians of the medieval and early modern period. They might be expected to play their instruments throughout the town at night, playing for the citizenry on dark winter mornings, or to play music for official occasions such as state visits. The musicians were dressed in fine clothes or liveries. However, we are presenting an impression from the Flemish lowlands. The word waits seems to translate to Dutch as stas pipers or just peepers or pipers in English and I really apologise for my pronunciation to those native speakers of Dutch. In Utrecht in the 15th century, peepers could be contracted or permanently employed by the city, liveried and expected to attend upon various city occasions such as religious processions and feast days. Furthermore, they must not leave the city without the permission of their burgomasters. They could accept work outside of their duties in the city with permission, but may not fight each other over jobs or wages. However, in Utrecht, for example, it seems as if this citizen soldiery had their own pipers and drummers who may or may not have also been paid by the city they would regularly find employ with the small city army. The use of music in the military 
has an extremely long history. It may be that pipers in some European cities originated from watchmen tower guards who used horns as signalling devices. Some scholars assert that this was definitely not the case in other cities. Some scholars also say that the martial uses for music may have been brought to Europe during the Crusades, having been observed in the Holy Land. Given the long tradition of travelling musicians referred to with various terms such as goliard, minstrel, troubadour, minazenga, etc., depending on location and specialty, it's difficult to track from where these Flemish military musicians were recruited. Certainly during the 14th century, there seems to have been a very general trend of transition from musicians having a largely itinerant lifestyle, most prevalent in the 12th and 13th centuries, to having the ability to gain a more stable employment with the cities and nobility in the 15th and 16th centuries. The late 14th century is not yet the time of the Franco-Flemish school of music. Burgundian musicians who created mostly polyphonic sacred music in the 15th and 16th centuries when Flemish music is considered to have developed its own very distinctive and influential style. There was the phenomenon of the night watch which is undisputed as being a function of the 14th century urban militia. Here again, it seems as if music, or something like music, utilising instruments such as various pipes, was an important element. Whether the military bands, town criers, and other familiar, more modern phenomena are relics of these practices, I have yet to investigate. As to repertoire, I could not find any specific reference to the kinds of sounds or songs made by these militia musicians, although the drums and horns of war historically are recorded as making a terrifying cacophonous din. The varied functions of such musicians could also include the following, to signal movements of armed forces playing through urban areas in the nighttime, waking up the citizenry in the morning by playing outside their homes, heralding the arrival to the city walls of dignitaries or combatants alike. We also see them marching with late 14th century militia and armies, either at the fore or the aft of the main group. Sometimes they're armed, sometimes not. It occurred to me that a musician of the late 14th century, as now, might be best placed to make a living if they were able to perform a wide range of repertoire and thus be able to hire themselves out to any variety of employers such as the city, private citizens or nobles. I already had a vague familiarity with some medieval songs that have survived through to the present day, so I relied heavily upon that. I come to medieval music as a person with a background in classical voice and 20th and 21st century popular music, voice, guitar and composition. However, my practice as a musician has long lapsed and I also have an intellectual and physical disability that makes learning to play songs a relatively lengthy and difficult process. In addition, I needed to work my rehearsals around Andrew's work from home schedule while remaining courteous to the neighbours. I began with a selection of seven songs, mostly secular, that I attempted to learn along with how to play three new instruments. When New Year rolled around and progress was inching along rather too slowly, I trimmed the set list down to four songs, selected for their ease of playing and anthemic appeal. I'm currently less than a week from the day of presenting the impression and the songs are still not of sufficiently good standard despite regular rehearsal. <laughs> it's looking like there might just be some simple drumming from me with the Guild Militia on the day. It's disappointing but I would rather present something simple 
that's of a reasonable standard than attempt something more complicated and make a mess of it. Those who are interested to check out my expanded rehearsal playlist can follow the link below. So, what about the appearance and character of the person who is in the employ of the urban militia? I based this mostly upon visual sources and admittedly, a lot of calculated guesswork was used. From textual sources, it seems as though a militia musician as I'll now call them, for short, was generally supplied with a suit of clothing or livery by their employer. That said to me that they would most likely wear clothes of a decent quality, perhaps almost like a uniform or of a smart practical nature. They wouldn't be too fancy or frivolous. But my employer is wealthy, wanting to display their wealth, so they might be a little better than the most basic quality clothing. The visual references of the time told me that the musicians might generally be masculine. I could find no images of references to feminine militia musicians, so I needed to create an entire new masculine wardrobe. I couldn't borrow anything at all from Andrew as we're completely different sizes. Strangely, my coiffure guided my clothing choice and brought up some interesting questions about gender presentation and performance, which I won't go into in, in this video because it's already quite a long one. I looked for illustrations of masculine people with long hair in the period that I reenact, and most of those wear a short forked beard. I have no ability to grow thick facial hair and I have a very long ponytail which I don't want to have to hide. However, I thought that I could perhaps get away with presenting myself as a younger masculine person without the beard, wearing the charming wrapped or plaited ponytail style we see in manuscripts of the late 14th century. Younger men in this period wore the fitted coat hardy, so that was the garment that I thought would be most coherent with my natural physical appearance. It's a garment with a relatively full chest, fitted waist and flared hip area, so this was in keeping with my natural body shape. There are also some contemporary illustrations of musicians wearing tall brimmed hats that are similar to bicockets. I really wanted to make one of those because it would help create an illusion of height and also keep the weather off me. I draped the coat hardy from two mock-ups on my body. It's my belief that in the late 14th century, this is the way that most high quality garments would have been made, perhaps more commonly using the final fabric or its lining rather than a waste fabric. Having it done by another person, such as the tailor, really cuts down on time. Likewise, I draped the hose on my own body in a similar manner using a mock-up. I also generated a paper pattern for myself so I could easily cut out another pair of hose in the future. But this step is not necessary and almost certainly not historical. I found that it was essential to make the linen braise before draping the hose. I made them using scraps of linen I had, drafted them from a conjectural pattern from bagrit.pl, which is now a defunct link. Um, and that pattern has characteristics found in some extant lower undergarments and pants. However, since making them, I've spoken to another excellent reenactor who has given me the benefit of their experience and knowledge and they recommend a method of construction similar to that in the Medieval Tailor's Assistant by Sarah Thursfield for practicality and historical accuracy. If you're looking for the method of construction I used for braise and hose, by happy accident, Hugo Banneret on YouTube made a video where they made similar items using almost exactly the same method I did. I will link in description. Please note 
They made a Boxton style hose while I made a semi joined hose, which is slightly different. The basic method, however, is very similar. Because of a number of reasons, even though we started early, I had very limited time to make all the items for this impression. So there was a lot of machine sewing of non-visible seams. I usually prefer to hand sew everything according to methods that are able to be supported with extant evidence. But on this occasion, it was a matter of just throw it together and fix it later. That means I will likely revise these garments at a later date if I'm to use them again. So far, the items I have personally made for this event have been linen braids, linen undershirt, fitted wool coat hardy, red semi-joined hose, wool by pocket. I have also made the following items for another reenactor who will be helping us present this impression. Green semi-joined hose. Linen breech girdle. There are some unfinished items I have also made or assisted in making. Red and white tablet woven linen sword belt, which probably won't be included. Red linen hand quilted jupon for Andrew. I have also bought a few items that I would like to use in this impression that, through my research, have seemed appropriate. Tabba pipe, a kind of three hole overtone flute. I was able to acquire a galoubet, which is perhaps a more modern style French variant of the tabba pipe, but it's not visually jarring. So I thought this was an acceptable compromise. A tabba drum, a small rustic shawm. The shawm is the ancestor of the oboe, although the instrument that I have might be a souvenir Turkish mizma or an Indian shenai. Nako drums. These are a kind of small twin kettle drum. There are some items that I personally would like to make to complete this impression, really flesh it out. A white linen bandana. These appear in manuscripts, but may not be necessary for this as I'm wearing a hat. A hood with a lira pipe. A silk banner, showing the colours of the Textile Cutters Guild in an applique of four colours. Also, the red linen jupon still needs the front eyelets to be sewn, of which there are a total of 50, and some inner seams to be felled. A new pair of garters, since I have loaned my leather ones to our friend who will be joining us and my spare pair of garters are not supported with evidence. White linen face masks, so we don't have to wear our modern black poplin and elastic ones. Well, there you have it. By the time you're viewing this video, it will be the day after our event, so all of these decisions about what to include and what not to include have already been made and the event is over. This video unfortunately won't include any images of us actually at the event. I hope you'll be kind to us. We're trying our best. There will however be photos on our social media, Modern Medieval Man on Facebook, on our Discord and at Urchin Creature and Modern Medieval Man on Instagram if you just wait a few hours for us to upload. Links below. The topics of medieval music, gender presentation in reenactment and in the medieval period, medieval tailoring, the guilds and the urban militia are all very wide and this impression has touched upon all of them. If you would like to see any videos on these topics, please browse at the videos on our channel. If you don't see what you're looking for, please comment or send us a message on our social media with a request and we'll do our best to make a video on that topic. Or check out the links below for further reading. Thanks for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Stay safe, have fun and keep reenacting.